Okay, everybody, Stephen Key here, and today I have a very special guest, kind of an unusual guest, someone that found me years ago and followed some of the things that we're talking about in the YouTube channel, maybe some articles, and, and now it's licensing ideas. So, pronounce your name again, Asa? Asa, yep. Asa, okay. Well, thank you for coming on InventRight TV. Um, this is kind of interesting because you reached out to me a while back because you licensed, I think, this idea here. Correct, yep. And um, it's from, you licensed it to Fat Brain Toys, which is a great company. I really like these guys. Mm -hmm. And um, you said that you learned about me when? Uh, so it was sometime when I was in middle school. So I think like 11, 12, 13, something in that age range. So wait a minute, let's back up here. Most kids that are in middle school, I don't think they're thinking about inventing, all right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe they don't really, under, you know, they, they have no clue what they want to do in life, but you seem to have a vision of what you wanted to do at such an early age. Yeah, so, I mean, I would say it really kind of goes back to with my parents just kind of supporting whatever I was interested in. And I mean, throughout my whole life growing up, I always liked tinkering, creating things, uh, playing games around the table with family and friends. Um, so I kind of knew from an early age that I was definitely interested in that. So I figured, hey, when I grow up, what do I want to do that kind of aligns with those interests and those passions? So I was fortunate enough at that age to have access to Google. So I kind of looked up stuff like what's a college major kind of related to that stuff, came across you and your articles, some videos, and I was very benefited uh, by learning all that stuff. So you played a lot of games at home. I love that. And your parents kind of let you just explore what you wanted to do. Were you good in school? I mean, were you an A student in school? Uh, I would say like B, B minus, like just enough to get by and please the parents, but not too much where I had to huh. not have enough time to do other fun stuff. Uh, so striking a good balance, I would say. Okay. So you, you find me and you, you decide, hey, I, I kind of like games and I think I'm going to do this. So, so where do you go from there? I mean, you're in, you're in junior high, right? I mean, so, yeah, at that time, yeah. Okay, so did you start to invent then? Were you coming up with ideas back when you were in middle school? Uh, so maybe not necessarily products and stuff, but like I can recall making Christmas presents or birthday presents for my parents. I would usually like tinker kind of with wood shop equipment with my dad and building stuff. Right. So I always like to be handy and stuff. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, from a from that age around middle school, I always like to create my own version of stuff. So like, what would my own candy bar be and design a name for it and like okay. packaging or I played baseball. So like, what would my baseball bat look like? Okay. Um, so I always liked doing that. And then around that time, I knew that I would, uh, I decided to major in industrial design at school. Okay. Um, so obviously the skill set that I was able to kind of develop through college obviously helped me. And then as I got older through high school and college, watching more of your videos, reading one simple idea, all that stuff and just seeking out information to better myself um, that really helped propel me into having the knowledge needed to kind of okay. reach out to companies and understand what the best way is to get products right. on the Okay, let's talk about this. Um, when I first saw this, I, you post, I think you posted somewhere and you said something and and I thought, well, this is, this is really cool. <laughs> you did a really good job with this. Um, Wow. Did you build a prototype? I'm sure you did. I did. And so kind of per your advice, believe it or not, just a simple printout sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper and just by hand with scissors, cut out little chameleon pieces. Okay. Uh, Cause the idea of the game is you have these chameleons with a unique pattern to blend into the different challenge sheet backgrounds. Um, so I kind of thought that that was a neat idea. So I just printed out some paper. Uh, printed on some paper, cut it out, and just kind of started testing and refining, okay. and then just spent a lot of time making all the challenges so it could work out. But yeah, zero dollars spent on the prototype. Yeah, thank you for saying that. You know, that's kind of my, you know, everybody has this thought about, I've got to spend all this money on a prototype. I'm like, wait a minute, maybe yes, maybe no, right? And yeah. I like to do things with paper. I'm a big paper engineer. I really love it. So thank you for saying that. 
Um, so you create this game and and you decide you're going to reach out to Fat Brain Toys. Uh, mm -hmm. Was that an easy experience? Was that easy? Uh, I mean, to be honest, I think the biggest hurdle is just deciding to do it. And obviously, you got to do your background research ahead of time of making a list of companies that are possible suitors. Okay. Um, obviously, you don't want to waste anybody's time if it's not a good fit. Um, so once I kind of generated a list, I just kind of prioritized it, started going right. down the list, and then fortunately was able to develop a nice relationship with the folks over at Fat Brain and okay. got a deal out of it. <laughs> All right, let's talk about this other one here. Okay, you, you, you really got me here because you, you send me this, this first one I see and I'm like, wow, this is really, really cool. And then you, I see another idea pop up and... And you license this now too. Is this still Fat Brain Toys? Uh, so that one, um, it's Peaceable Kingdom, which is a line of mindware. Oh. Um, so they make a lot of games and toys for younger children, stuff like that. Okay. So now you're working with multiple companies now. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Congratulations. Um, Thank you. It's really, you know, for someone like myself that um, I wasn't very good in school and wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. And I found something I truly love to do, right? And I thought, well, this is really cool stuff, and it's it's doable. Mm -hmm. And you need a little bit of guidance, but you can get in the game. You clearly did. Um, so what are you working on now? What are you doing now? Oh, man, I wish I could say a couple things where it's easy to spend the time and focus on it. But um, I have so many ideas that I'm constantly working on, like, five different things at different stages all at the same time, which is nice because it keeps things interesting. You never get burned out with one idea. Um, and then it also kind of allows me the time to take some space away from a certain idea and then kind of look back at it with a fresh perspective after okay. I'm working on something else. Um, but right now I'm actually developing a couple different card game ideas. So kind mm -hmm. of uh, not necessarily the younger children brain teaser kind of solo puzzle games, but uh, just really anything. Um, but yeah, so right now I'm pretty excited about a couple of card games I'm working on. Great. How old are you now? <laughs> about 25. Wow. If you were going to give someone um, some advice that they're just starting out, and they're kind of thinking that they're creative, and what would you tell them? What, what would you say? I would say make sure you're passionate, follow your curiosity. So even if you don't think an idea is good, develop it because at the very least you're refining that skill of going through that process um but i think the number one key is have an open mind and be persistent because obviously as you know in the industry you're going to face a lot of rejection um but as long as you're passionate about it and you're kind of following your curiosities let's say you spend a lot of time and energy on something and it turns out to be a dud and never ends up on the market okay i think having a good perspective to know that that knowledge could help maybe give you success with the next idea but also understanding that if you truly enjoyed it it wasn't for nothing mm -hmm. um, and i think once you kind of get past that you never give up because it's very easy to get discouraged after x amount of rejections um, but i think if you just have a positive attitude stay persistent um, the success will come yeah i'm glad you said that because there's a lot of um, hurdles obstacles in the way and you have to find a way to keep pushing through. And I do think um, everything that you do kind of leads to the next project, kind of. Mm -hmm. And it's never for waste. And building those relationships with companies are pretty important. So, well, thank you for reaching out to me. And thank you for um, coming back and showing me what you're doing. And please keep me posted on anything else that you're doing. I think it's fantastic. So, thank you so much. Yeah, I definitely will. I really appreciate your support and your time and everything. Well, it, it's so uh, rewarding to see, um, you know, creating, you know, writing the books and knowing that people are actually reading them <laughs> and they're actually using them. It's, it's really great to see. So uh, thank you very much. Of course. Absolutely. Thank you.